action. Hey friend, in this video, we are going over three tips to help you with controlling water using watercolor. So one of the main questions that people ask when they're beginners or intermediate level, advanced level, all across the board is how much water should I be using so I don't get hard lines or how much water should I be using for a specific subject? So I'm gonna cover three different tips in this video to help you with your own water control because it is a tricky situation to navigate. So let's get started. How much water do I use? Well, the answer to that question, it depends. I know that's super annoying, but it truly is. It, it depends. So how much water you're going to use on a big uh, wash is going to be different than if you're painting a small little area that you want smooth coverage. So if you are painting like a little leaf, let's say, and you want to have no hard lines on that leaf, you want a smooth wash coverage, um, you're gonna have less water in your mixture than something, say, like a big background that has a bunch of strokes and basically covers the entire paper. So for example, let's just go through that and I'll do some demonstrations. But my first tip for controlling water is to blot. So let's say I have a mixture in my mixing well that has just a little bit of pigment and a lot of water. So with watercolor, you're always working with a pigment to water ratio. That is always changing um, depending on what you're painting, but even within stroke to stroke, it's always changing. And so because of that, we can't really have a method or a formula to how much water to pigment ratio you should have to have good water control because it's different per what you're painting. But let's say I have, I want a really light um, Scarlet Lake and I'm bringing it in my mixing well to lighten it. So I basically have like mostly water to a little bit of Scarlet Lake pigment in this mixing well. If I grab this puddle right here and basically go straight to my paper and let's say I'm only creating a tiny swatch like this size, I'm gonna get this hard line right here because I'm gonna create a puddle on the edge of my swatch and because it's such a small area, the puddle can't really move and spread out and create even coverage. So if I'm creating something that's smaller, like a swatch that's about half an inch size, um, I am going to want to, and this is my first tip, I'm gonna want to blot my brush on my paper towel so that it just soaks up that water on the paper towel first, so that when I lay down a swatch, I've got a nice, even, um, amount of coverage all across that wash. So there's even a little puddle down here, but I'm not worried about it because it's not too intense of a puddle. And so let's do that again. Let's grab as much pigment as we can off our brush. And instead, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I don't blot. It's going to be a very um, kind of dome-shaped puddle on top of this swatch, which when it dries is going to create a hard line around that puddle. So if you don't want those hard lines, you wanna make sure you blot first and then go to paint it. My second tip for water control is lifting. So let's say you are painting a leaf and you have a lot of water on your brush and you're not really aware that it's too much water to where it's gonna create a puddle um, because that will happen. Here, let's get even more water. So my second tip for you is this is way too much water. So this puddle right here is going to basically just create a nasty hard line on that leaf. And if you don't want that hard line, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you lift the color. So you can blot it before, but if you don't catch it before, you can basically clean your brush off, dry it off completely, or use your paper towel if you want, and soak up that puddle so that we can create an even coverage across across the leaf. A paper towel probably would have been faster. But now that we have no puddle, it's not gonna create those hard lines. So it's not gonna create that hard line texture that we get when we have too much water. So then my third tip for
for water control is, let's say you're painting a big wash, because remember, water control, or how much water do I use, that will depend on what you're painting. Um, we can use lifting and blotting on our smaller areas, and we can also use it if we're painting a big, a really big area, like a wash or a background. But one thing that is a little bit more apparent with these big washes like this is immediately when you lay it down, you can see areas or puddles that are gonna create those hard lines. And so in order to help that blend with more even coverage, we can bring that puddle into our wash and continue to bring it down. So the further we spread the puddle, so continuing back and forth with these big swatches like this, these big strokes, is going to basically create that even coverage. So if you maybe don't want to blot it or lift the color for your washes, and you want a little bit of that texture uh, from the hard line, you can leave it, but also you can also bring it in these bigger areas or bigger paintings like landscapes, you can bring those puddles into your strokes and spread them out, spread them out evenly so that it doesn't create those hard lines. All right, there you have it. The three tips for helping you with water control using watercolor, we went over blotting. So blotting the color or the water off of your brush on paper towel before you go to paint and then lifting the color. So once you've already painted something and you're noticing that there's a puddle and you don't want it to create a hard line, lift that color and that puddle with your dry brush or a paper towel or even a Q-tip and then the third tip is spreading. So if you have a bigger area of coverage, like if you're painting a landscape, a big sky or a big wash, you can spread that puddle so it evenly creates coverage throughout the entire area of, of coverage. <laughs> so those are my three tips. Again, remember there is no method, there is no formula. This is something that you're constantly tweaking and constantly watching. So if you're a beginner, just know that even the advanced watercolorists are constantly dealing and struggling with water control. You just get better at watching for puddles and lifting or blotting the color, spreading the color, etc. So it depends on what you're painting. Have fun with it and try out those three methods in your next painting. And let me know below if you have any other tips for water control. I would love to help this community out even further. And I'd also love to learn from you guys. So I hope that was helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video. But it is so high quality and good. So you can easily do some color lifting. Your colors are gonna look vibrant and rich on this paper. They're not gonna be dull or um, muted looking, and they're also gonna blend really well. So a lot of cheaper watercolor papers, like Canson watercolor paper, for example, um, 